so you're going to need to start by exploding all the groups uh, so select everything you can go edit select all and then right click and explode you're probably going to need to do this a number of times because you may have groups within groups so each time select all and explode it's worth it doing it one last time just checking to see that you haven't got any boxes there next you're going to need to turn everything white so open the materials windows materials with everything selected and start clicking on the figures and the colors uh, just rotate around and make sure everything has been colored white so then you're going to need to hide some of the detail on the SketchUp people so use the erase tool with the shift key held down and this will hide rather than delete the detail hide anything within the boundary of the figure uh, hands chin uh, fingers you know detail from clothing um, as we really don't require this level of detail uh, don't forget to look all around the figure so look at the f the shoes are easy to forget and some of these little details so once you've finished deleting the detail from the people you're going to need to change the style so if you go to window and then styles then from the drop down menu choose sketchy edges and I quite like the pencil style so that's uh, third row up so once you've opened the style you're going to need to import the background in you're going to click on the edit tab towards the top of the styles tablet underneath the edit tab there are a row of five small icons click on the fourth one along which has a little OK written on it then click on the plus sign to add the background you then need to open up the background that you scanned in earlier when the background comes in it comes in an overlay so click the background button and then the next button you can now click through the remaining windows just click next and then click finish once you've got the background in you're going to need to arrange the model in front of it and you're going to need to uh, sort the perspective out it's highly unlikely that your model will be with the correct perspective so what I often do is I extend the lines back using the pen tool which will give you a better idea of whether your whether the perspective of your model matches the perspective of your uh, background you're gonna then gonna need to go to camera and field of view 
click and drag and you can see the perspective changing. I can also add some lines in on the background to make it clearer where the vanishing point would be. You don't have to get it exact because it's not that easy to tell but it probably needs to be closer than what we've got here so you can see that there's no way that either of my lines going back would meet would meet where the the vanishing point appears to be so I'm going to delete those lines go back to the field of view and make the perspective a little bit more aggressive if you don't delete the lines um, when you do the field of view the vanishing point would obviously move so you've got to put them in each time when you adjust them that seems a little better it's not perfect but it's it's getting much better but the one on the right is still perhaps a little bit too far away so again I'm going to delete the lines go back to the field of view tool drag it make the perspective a little bit more aggressive I can put the lines back in again and I think this will probably do it that looks pretty good the one on the left is I would say spot on and the one on the right well that's not too bad so that's probably gonna do it yeah I think I'll just live with that so once I've deleted the lines I'm going to zoom in increasing the size of the object to fill the image a bit better open the styles palette then click on the, the edge settings box then use the level of detail slider to adjust the level of detail on the image. Then I'm going to adjust the level of the halo setting. The halo adjusts uh, where lines meet up, so it extends them where you get joins of lines, so around the joint there. I'm going to extend it a lot, so I'm extending it out to 40 so you can see where it actually is. So you can see they're much longer than you need. So now I'm going to adjust it back to something reasonable, maybe 10. I can also adjust how far the lines extend out at the end of the line. I'm going to extend this out uh, much longer again, so 40. And you can see that you get that crazy kind of porcupine effect. Again, I'm going to adjust it back to something reasonable like 4. Uh, you don't need much at all but a little bit really helps so then you can close the styles palette then what I'm going to do is to selectively hide some of the lines using the eraser so use the eraser plus shift I'm gonna hide some of the lines which probably you wouldn't draw such as the divisions on the flat surface they look very computer based so I'm just going to hide those also hide any other lines that don't really seem to belong there or perhaps overly complicate the image So I'm going to keep adjusting it. Um, I'm probably going to delete a couple more lines that I've left over from the perspective um, as well. And I think I'm going to rotate it a little because it looks like it's slightly dipping down. Then I'm going to select all. So edit, select all. And I'm going to 
use the rotate command. You might not have to do this, you probably won't, but sometimes it's useful. I'm going to lock it in position using the shift so it doesn't stick to the surfaces. Stick it on the side and I'm going to just try and rotate it a tiny little bit. That's probably a bit much. Uh, just rotate it down a tiny amount. As I say, you're unlikely to need to do this, but you, that's kind of how you're going to do it if you need to. So I'm going to keep adjusting it using the pan command and the zoom. You might not want to use the scroll wheel. You might want to use the actual zoom command because it allows finer adjusting. You're trying to get it in as good a position as possible. Then you need to go to the view command, then animation and add scene. Make sure you select the save as a new style point and then set. Then go to windows and shadows and in the top left hand corner click turn the shadows on I want to adjust the lightness of the shadows so in the dark setting I'm going to slide it up then I'm getting a difference between the dark and the light on the ground then I'm going to use the freehand drawing tool just to outline the shadow which will make it look a little bit more hand drawn. So select the freehand tool and follow round the shape. Uh, don't worry if it's not too accurate. Uh, the gaps look quite nice and make it look a little bit more hand rendered. Just try to follow round the shape. Uh, reasonably accurately but the odd gap is is quite nice So at this point you could choose to stop, you could choose to add more colour by printing it out and painting on it or by using Photoshop but we can also add it within SketchUp. So you're going to go to Windows and Styles and click on the Mix tab which is next to Edit. You're then going to uh, select from the default folder and you need to take from the shaded one just next to hidden line drag and drop it onto the face settings sketchy edges uh, styles which we would initially selected which we would base this on uh, is doesn't you allow you to color individual faces it's just a black and white so the shaded allows you to color. So if you open the materials up, select uh, a reasonably light color and you can then color selected parts of the image. Don't color too much. You want this to still appear to be uh, hand drawn or more expressive than trying to be realistic. So I'm just going to use the colour to highlight the structure of the object. Now don't forget to save and also if you right click on the scene tab and update and then click update uh, it will save the changes you've made. Uh, also uh, you can choose to export it as a 2D graphic um, and don't forget to change the uh, resolution to a bit higher with the options tab.